Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you a very dramatic game played at 2021 European Team Championship. On the white side is German chess grandmaster Vincent Kamer and his opponent is Danish chess grandmaster Jonas Bjold Pierre. Kamer opened up with d4 to which Pierre, the hero of this game, Jonas Bjold Pierre answered with knight f6, c4 e6, knight f3 d5. The good old Queen's Gambit declined, 3 nets variation is on the board. Against Queen's Gambit, Black is choosing Ragozin variation, Black castled, Bishop d2, b6 he takes d5, he takes d5, of course all this is a theory seen many times, and rook e8. Other popular alternatives are a6, uh, bishop b7, bishop e7, in the game we have rook e8, and later if needed, Black can keep alive the dark squared bishop by moving it all the way back to f8, something which we are going to see in the game. Instead of playing bishop b7, you can also play bishop a6, something which Magnus Carlsen had played twice, but blank fianchetted the light squared bishop and finally white also castled kingside. There it goes, bishop f8. If needed in some cases, the bishop can also be useful when organizing the defense. Meanwhile, white knight is occupying a central square and f4, strengthening the knight further. And also in future, white can switch the dark squared bishop into the game from e1. Knight c6, knight e2, rook c8, bishop e1, and a novelty by Jonas Bultpierre, knight e4. Let me tell you that up to this point, we were following Fidid versus Dominguez Perez game, and in that game, black played knight e4 after going for c takes d4, and only the knight e4 was made. Uh, but in, in our game, we have knight e4 straight away, this is a novelty. Here white hurried to get rid of that knight, and then made a very interesting decision and played uh, knight takes f7. Uh, a move made by Vincent Kamert almost without thinking. All Blake could do was to accept the peace sacrifice, there comes queen b3 check. And now question arises, how should black defend? Can you find black's next move? Ready? Uh, well, probably you noticed that you should play king g6. But first, before making that move, there is a Zwischenzug which you should make, and that move is c4, a very subtle and powerful defensive move by Pierre. The idea is that you are inviting white queen to step on c4 in order later to uh, get a tempo with, for example, a discovered attack. Yeah, on c4 later the queen is exposed to some attacks and only then we see king g6. f5 check king h6, white proceeds with the attack but it's not that easy to target this king. Bishop g3 and there comes knight e5. Now can you understand the idea of that c4 move? Now if for example queen b3 then knight d3 can follow, that's why white queen intruded inside opponent's camp and also white created a bishop f4 threat. But the queen is not welcomed in black's camp and it was attacked straight away. At the same time black can cover the king with bishop g5. Rook takes c8, bishop takes c8, bishop f4 check, and there comes bishop g5. Bishop takes g5, and now you have to be very careful. In case of king takes g5, you can get checkmated very quickly. And then h4 is coming. Uh, that's why h4, uh, knight g3 mate, right? And that's why after bishop takes g5 check, black recaptured with the uh, queen, but left the rook on e8 unprotected, which white won. We're going through a very sharp and entertaining battle, and yeah, this looks very interesting. Queen takes e3 check. In return, now black is trying to organize a counterattack, and white knight on e2 also dropped. Uh, now black is threatening mate in one. We have rook c1. Uh, Kamer is not interested in a peaceful result, and he won't, and and still he wants to target this king. A more solid move is rook a1. In this case, you have to be ready for repeating the moves and ending up the game in a draw. But in our game, we have rook c1, knight d3, rook c6 check, king g5. Where is this black king going, guys? 
queen e7 check so far so good but this queen e7 check spoils everything and it's a losing move better move is h3 but it uh, turns out that even so still there is no way to uh, gain advantage and we have an equality on the board and then rook c2 uh, but in our game we have queen e7 check and now it's white who is finding himself in trouble and let's see what's the problem with it there comes king f4 the black king is looking for a shelter in white's camp this is crazy guys now we have a direct mating threat yes yeah, still that mating threat is hanging in the air white played h3 but already white has allowed black king to come too near already it's late for h3 and now for that queen e7 check white will pay a high price king h1 king h1 allows mate in five better was king g1 but even so white is losing uh, white can't save this position in the game we have king h1 and now let's see how black announced the forced mate check king h1 queen e1 check and finally at this point white resigned if king h2 then another check and then queen h1 checkmate that's why yeah after queen e1 check resignation followed a very very interesting and dramatic battle first it was white who was trying to target black king but it moved towards white's army then white counterattacked, and the one who found himself in trouble was white king white paid a high price for that queen e7 check that move totally spoiled this beautiful attacking game Anyways, hope that you enjoyed it, feel free to share with your friends as well and in the end a chess puzzle where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.